Some people are insecure and anxious in relationships. This is a style of attachment where you constantly seek validation and love because you can't stop fearing the person will leave. And some people have a more avoidant attachment style. They don't like commitment. They can seem cold and they can be quick to leave relationships as soon as it gets uncomfortable for them. Everyone has an attachment style, which tends to reflect the strengths and weaknesses of the way that you were cared for as a child. And some people were so well loved, they have what's called a secure attachment style. And for those of us who didn't start out with that, we can work toward it at least. But the hardest attachment style of all, where a person is both fearful and avoidant, it's called disorganized attachment. It's where you can swing between intense longing and trying to hold on to a relationship, giving your all to make it work, and then shutting down and pulling away for the tiniest reason, which hurts the other person. And if it's not healed, it can make real love almost impossible. My letter today is from a woman I'll call Rain, and she writes, Dear Anna, I've been struggling to find a safe, stable man to date for my whole life, and now that I may have finally found one, I think I ruined it. I've had a crush on a man at my workplace for almost three years now. I was instantly attracted when I first saw him, and my affection for him only grew when I learned about him. He is also a single parent, and I frequently see him around town outside of work with his kids, who are clearly well cared for. We have mutual interests, lifestyles, and I find him to be insanely cute. He's smart, kind, well-respected, and responsible, all things I want in a partner. We did flirt a little bit early on, but we both ended up dating other people. So from then on, we're just friendly, but distant. So I was over the moon excited last month when a mutual friend at work told me that he was trying to find out if I was single, and the friend agreed to ask me if I'd be interested in him on his behalf. I like that. I was so astounded that this man was interested in me that I couldn't even respond. When I went home for the day, my excitement slowly turned to anxiety, and I started thinking about all the ways it could go wrong. The fact that I was embarrassed by the way I was asked out didn't help, because I'm already a shy and self-conscious person. I compared myself to other girls I've seen him date in the past, and wondered what his intentions were. I became afraid of getting my heart broken. I was wary of getting trapped in another bad relationship, and worried about my work life blowing up. When I went in the next morning, the friend pressured me for a yes or no answer, and I ended up saying no, saying I didn't want work to be affected, but to make sure he knows I do like him a lot. Well, the problem is I immediately regretted my choice. I think I may have been making an excuse because I'm afraid and I don't feel good enough. And now at work, I can't help myself. I'm extra flirtatious toward him. I started dressing up more, seeking him out, and trying to initiate conversations with him, hoping we will have an opportunity to address the idea of going out again. I've been heavily fantasizing about being with him almost every moment of the day. My whole mood is made or ruined by whether or not he says hello to me when he walks by. One week I saw him talking to another much younger girl and I immediately felt betrayed, like it confirmed my suspicion he wasn't serious about me, and I decided to ignore him. He was clearly puzzled by me and suddenly giving him the cold shoulder and he began ignoring me back. But before long, I felt very stupid about my reaction and resumed being friendly to him. We're on good terms again. I feel terrible about how I'm behaving and why I'm ruining what could be a good thing. I realize it's not kind to treat him this way, but I have problems from my history. I grew up with a negligent, distant mother that was an alcoholic during my early years and the only positive attention that I did receive was from my stepfather who was inappropriate with me throughout my whole childhood. That's not positive, when no one was around. As soon as I turned 16, the age of consent in my state, he tried to initiate a sexual relationship with me. When I rejected him, yeah, oh dear, he drove deeper into drugs and abandoned the family. He dove deeper, and I never saw him again, yeah. Shortly after, I had a child when I was still very young and an, with an abusive man that I stayed with for 12 years. My most recent boyfriend was also physically abusive and wouldn't allow me to break up with him until I finally filed a restraining order. So I've never had a real loving relationship. 
Is there any hope of saving this situation now and starting a real healthy relationship with the man I admire? Or have I already sent too many signals that I'm only going to be a headache? Thank you very much for your advice. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about disorganized attachment here and what's going on. Rain, I, oh, this is so hard. I'm so glad like a really nice man is interested in you. That's really cool. But I'll tell you right now, I think you're not ready. And like, he's a person with feelings who kind of put himself out there about dating. And I think that because of what you've been through and how it affects your ability to show up in a relationship, like even if you could get another chance and show up, I think there's a really high chance you would hurt this guy emotionally, that it wouldn't be good for him. And, and so I wanted to like bring your attention to what love really is. It's not about getting our own needs met. Like real love is where you really care about how, what your effect is on another person, on your partner. And are you a good thing in their life? Something that helps their life be better than it would be without you in some way. So this thing where you said, you know, does he just think I'm a headache? He might, but right now, because your trauma is so active, you've been through so much. Oh my goodness. There's some stuff for you to unpack before you would be able to be in a relationship. Now we've all met people who have been through terrible trauma, but the way it affected them, they were still able to have like a trusting, loving, real friendship, real partnership. You know, I like, I, I told you, I liked this guy. He was very like being interested in somebody at work is tricky. And I like what he did where he just had a friend check in with you so that it was less pressure for you. It was all weird for you because it's all just weird dating and you have CPTSD. I hate what your parents did to you. I'm not surprised at all that these things are a struggle for you. It's so okay that that has happened to you. And it's so tempting to want to get in a relationship because there are so many ways that that could make your life better and more fun and more secure and just to be loved, you know, just to finally be loved. And I do get it. So there's a small possibility that you could be working on your healing for a year or two. And if you guys are still in each other's lives, who knows? but I am not getting the feeling that it's a good idea for you to get into a relationship. You're still having this disorganized attachment and disorganized attachment, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't give up easily. Our attachment styles are very deep in us and we can change and we can heal them and you can. And I just like, the now is the time. Now is the time to put all your energy into like, I'm going to heal this thing about myself where you want it so bad. You talked about kind of impulsively getting into relationships for a week or two, and then it's over and boom, you feel nothing. That's a, that's like an impulsive or compulsive thing going on, which is not good. That can really put danger and problems in your life and children <laughs> and a lot of things that you're not in a position to handle well right now. So maybe you have really like done due diligence and you've done therapy and you've done groups and maybe um, the 12 step group of sex and love addicts anonymous, go to a meeting that's just for women. Don't hang out with the men. <laughs> Don't ever be alone with the men. It's not because they're bad. It's because they're trying to recover right now. They're trying to recover from whatever they're going through. And so if you're kind of new and you can't really control whether you're flirty or impulsive, that would be bad for both of you. And so out of consideration for other people, you know, we just do this in a little bit more of a monastic way. And I really advocate that like, like a monk for a little while later, you can come out and be in a relationship, but to start having relationships with women, you trust women, you can be honest with women. You can study literature with about how does a person heal from this stuff? How does a person overcome the sexual abuse you went through the neglect the having been a teenage mom, that's, that's a lot. I could see why, I could see why a lot of dust kicks up when you start liking somebody. So the pattern that that is producing in you, my friend, is not a very easy one to manage, but it's where you want the relationship and too much excitement goes into it. So you go rushing in, can't handle the relationship, go rushing out. It's kind of like a tornado that comes through the town. So don't be the tornado be the light, be the good person who works on healing so that you can make wise choices about who you decide to date. This guy does seem like a nice person to date if you were ready. So you with this, oh my goodness, you had this abusive marriage. Then you had this, a physically abusive boyfriend. 
this there's so much healing that has to go on here and you can heal you can heal and you deserve to heal but i don't think it goes under the rug under the vague hope that the new relationship will just sort of move you to a new level once we've been through enough trauma that you know it's kind of inside we can't we can't always just make that leap and just be like i can just go to the good life i'll be okay i'll handle it it's going to have rough patches it's going to have rough patches and so there's a way you could do this and you can even this guy at work I would just recommend being a little more honest with him and say, you know, in my past, I, I, I came from a rough family. I had a very rough marriage. I had another rough relationship and I'm really working on myself right now. And I like you and um, I would be very interested in dating you. But I know that right now I'm bringing a lot of like stress into it. Yeah, just let him know that you're healing for a while. Don't try to make a promise that in the future you'll be with him or let him know that you hope for that set him free to go figure out his life. I, it's been my experience that some things really are, they're meant to be, and they come together even when people are going through a rough time, and even especially because they're working on healing. The people who um, can encourage you and support you in your healing are friends who are meant to be, and the partners who end up causing you to want to heal and recover are like angels in your life. Sometimes some good person enters your life and even though they're not in your destiny, they prompt you to take a step up. That's a beautiful and good role to play. And so I'm just, you know, I don't think you should wait and see, just allow yourself to heal because you don't even, this is my experience of recovery. Like the person you think you are and the person you think you want to be with when you get into recovery is one thing. <laughs> and the person you are and the person who's actually good for you is so is like the product of so much personal evolution and change that and it can be so much better. They have this saying in 12 um, step recovery beyond your wildest dreams. And it's true. It's true. Like right now, because your trauma is still affecting you, you can't even see yet what a good thing is possible for you when you're healed. So I hope you carry on with that. For anybody here who's going through an intense time, pain is coming up, you're trying to make a positive change, take care of yourself in the way, when you make a change, when you stop doing a, a, an old kind of habit or crutch that you've leaned on in the past or an addiction, feelings are gonna come up. You need a tool in hand that you can take with you everywhere you go, and that is the daily practice. I, I've been doing it now for 30 years. I've shared it with thousands of people. And as most of you know who watch this channel, it's a free course. You can download it anytime and join me on free daily practice calls on Zoom every two weeks. They're a great joy to be part of, and I'd love to see you there. If you want to take the course, take the course before you come to the calls. You can access that course right there, and I will see you very soon.